coming up on Transformative Principle. When we talk about the idea of psychological safety, I just, there are so many times where I just didn't feel like safe or comfortable or anything like that to be able to just speak up about things and just felt like my boundaries were pushed and just some kind of like general unkindness and then feeling the unkindness and then also feeling powerless again, definitely not a pleasant experience, you know, even at the residential facility. And and even when I did my internship, it, it was just not always the best environments. Welcome to Transformative Principle, where I help you stop putting out fires and start leading. I'm your host, Jethro Jones. You can follow me on Twitter at Jethro Jones. I'm launching a new website, transformativeprinciple.com. You can go there to learn about and join the mastermind. And also, you can go there to learn how to get positive press for your school. What's better than you telling your story all the time? Getting other credible third parties to tell your story for you. Go to transformativeprinciple.com. Once again, that's transformativeprinciple.com. So I'm trying something new here. I downloaded this app called Wisdom, which is all about sharing your wisdom with others. And I'd like to invite you to join me in that app. Just look for my username at Jethro Jones in the Wisdom app. That's Jethro Jones in the Wisdom app. So this episode is coming out today, which is, believe it or not, December 12th. And so later this week on Wednesday, December 15th, I'm going to do a, a little live conversation at 12.30 p.m. Pacific time. And I would like you to join me on there and let's talk about things. So, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about this episode about psychological safety. The app is called Wisdom. If you have an iPhone, you can get it in the app store. It's called Wisdom. So just download it. And on Wednesday at 12.30 We'll give it a shot. We'll go live and see what happens. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. That's the Wisdom app on Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Pacific. See you then. Welcome to Transformative Principle. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome Michael Vargas to the program. He is an international facilitator with nearly 10 years of experience, utilizing his master's in clinical psychology, improv and design thinking background. Michael facilitates workshops and speaks to organizations on developing collaborative and productive team cultures. He supports teams to develop psychological safety, build trust, and have effective communication. He has worked with a variety of organizations like Dropbox, Salesforce, Kaiser Permanente, ACLU, Evergreen Middle School, shout out to the school in there, and the County of San Diego, and many more. Jethro, thank you so much for having me here and being able to host a space where we can have some pretty cool conversations. Michael, I wonder if you would help us understand your background, how you got to where you're at working with people on psychological safety and helping people improve their cultures. What led you to where you're at now? Yeah. So, you know, we got to talk a little bit about it earlier, but I know that I used to, so I used to work at uh, substance abuse facilities and residential facilities for mental health. And the last one I worked in in particular kind of helps in Capilla and, and it kind of brings together everything that led me to this work. And I think this is something that a lot of other people can relate to. So this was, I was living in San Francisco and like I said, residential facility for mental health. So people with, uh, who have substance abuse, uh, people who have schizophrenia, bipolar, PTSD. And our goal was to get them integrated back into the community and give them as many resources as possible to get them on their feet. And so just in that experience, I had to make sure that a lot of that every client that came in felt safe. 
Um, and that's not an easy thing to do, especially with people who've been homeless and on the streets for a decade and had the system kind of bring them in and spit them back out in, in a sense. Um, where there have been plenty of people there saying we we're going to help you and then just kind of vanish on them. Or they just lived in an environment that would always put them down and beat them up. So in the, the residential facility, we worked very hard to make sure that they felt safe. But what happened for me, which was um, unexpected when I went into this work, was there is my manager. And she was one of the most brilliant people I still to this day have ever met in my entire life. The amount of information that she could hold in her head was incredible. Um, and, you know, after I, I was working there and then after a few months, Eve, like right from the beginning, I would go to her for questions and say, hey, um, I'm not sure how to do this. Can you explain to me? And she would look at me like, she would kind of look down on me and said, how do you not know this now? You need to know this. So what's wrong with you for not knowing this? Ugh, this is what you have to do. And then she would go like 10 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, tell me what I have. To do. And that was very consistent. And it made things really difficult for me. And I just didn't feel comfortable enough to share whenever I had challenges, uh, when I had new ideas, just anything that I felt like might put her over the edge a little bit. And that's that was part of the reason why I decided to kind of leave that world. And the more I talked about it with other people, the more I learned that other organizations definitely had feelings like this. And the other half of the equation, like you said, was the improv theater company. And I was able to bring my psychology to improv and help people feel really safe and also just really like do a really great job of working with one another, collaborating with one another, having a good time with one another. And so they asked me to start bringing this to their workplace. And I said, okay, I can do that for you. Sure. And so, like we said, first company was with Dropbox, Salesforce, and so on and so forth. And so I use improv as like a tool, but now I dive more deep into, okay, how do we create environments where people feel safe and comfortable to share their ideas, to talk about their mistakes, to to share different perspectives. And I think one of the ultimate ways that you know that you can have psychological safety is when we can challenge each other without divisive conflict, right? Mm -hmm. So being able to say, I don't agree with that and be able to dive into that, but then still laugh and have fun and get to enjoy each other through the process. Yeah, that's, that's good. I like that definition there of psychological safety exists when you don't have divisive conflict because that's one of those things that is really easy to to have in an organization and it's it doesn't mean <clears throat> correct me if i'm wrong but it doesn't mean that you there's a lot of yelling or fighting or anger or any of that it just means that you don't you don't feel like an other when you disagree at work is that a fair way to say that that's 110%. You hit the nail on the head. That's a beautiful way to put it. It's because what often happens is this us versus them dynamic and we build up walls and we are defensive and we try to win and they, you know, the other person needs to lose. And that's not the idea at all. The idea is for us to be able to understand one another, be able to see different perspectives, see different things in, in all the different ways and really learn from one another. So that I as a human being can grow, you as a human being can grow, and then we can have the impact that we're looking to have for the people that we serve because we have that. So it doesn't mean it's yelling. It doesn't mean it's screaming. It doesn't mean it's name calling. It doesn't mean that we're talking about someone behind their back and saying, oh, I can't believe how Karen talked about that, right? That's not it at all. It's about deep understanding and working to be kind to one another during the process. Right. And kindness doesn't mean that you never disagree or that you don't have conflict, but that your conflict is not seated in this idea that you're wrong. Therefore you're worse than me. Like, like the story you shared uh, with your manager who, you know, basically made you feel like an idiot because you weren't a hundred percent sure of exactly everything. And that's just not a healthy way to be. Right. And going back to your earlier statement, there's a thing that I, a good friend of mine helped me really see this uh, toxic positivity mm. where Everyone says, oh, we don't argue, we're good, we're nice, everyone gets along, and yet people are very scared to 
challenge one another, push each other, say, I disagree with your premise of this conversation and so on and so forth. So it doesn't mean that everyone's just being nice all the time. True psychological safety is about being able to push back when you see something different or you disagree. I'm very fortunate enough where in my life, I have these amazing people in my life who they can look at me and say, Michael, I love you. And you know, you're acting like a moron right now, right? And then we laugh about it. And I'm so grateful. And then we dive into it. And that's because we just feel so safe with one another to be able to do that. John Cat Educational supports high-quality teaching and learning by providing publications that are research-based, practical, and focused on the key topics proven essential in today's and tomorrow's schools. The latest John Cat publications include a book whose bold, transformative ideas amaze and infuriate people around the world, according to one reviewer, a title from Global Leaders in Curriculum Planning, Practice, and Retrieval, one book that says Stop Talking and Start Doing with regard to teacher well-being, and much more. These books used by educators of all roles across North America and worldwide amplify fresh, engaging voices with practical strategies to create transformative change. Learn more in our show notes at jethrojones.com slash podcast. Yeah, that's a, that's a big deal for that to have those kind of relationships. So uh, those, these negative or non-psychologically safe situations can happen among peers, but they can also happen, as you mentioned, with a manager or supervisor. Absolutely. And, and sometimes it feels like the only option is to leave that organization when you have a supervisor that doesn't make you feel psychologically safe. What other things can people do short of leaving uh, to rectify the situation? What's your advice for them? Yeah, so there's a variety of things that we can do. And and you can try to even, one, work on things internally for oneself. Um, So one of the things that I've gotten to work with a lot of people on and for myself is to just build an internal sense of safety. Where Mm -hmm. And I also kind of tie this into resiliency, which is a hard thing to teach, but working on when someone is telling me something about something to not take it personally, right? To know that that's just their opinion and that's just their way of being and how they're acting has nothing to do with me at all. It's just who this person is. Um, Now that's really difficult, but that's definitely one that I think provides dividends just in anyone's life. Um, But if that's not, you know, if you're looking for something a little bit more immediate, I would say the first thing to do is start to find other people in your organization, in your group, uh, with the people that you work with who also feel the same way. And just be able to start working with one another to see what it is that you all can do. Now, this doesn't mean you then go start a coup, right? Right. It doesn't mean this is about the us versus them dynamic. It's just about working to see what can we do as a group to help create a better work environment where we're more productive. And then one of the ways that you could really do that is look at what's happening that's making you not feel safe and other people aren't feel safe and see if you can start thinking of an alternative that allows for more safety, but also shows this other person how it would lead to more productivity. Mm -hmm. So a simple example could be, you know, uh, clarity. So a lot of processes, like I've worked with several organizations on their decision-making process. And there's not a lot of clarity around their decision-making process. So you can meet with your your group of people and start talking about, hey, this decision-making process isn't really clear. What if we try to better understand this through curiosity and say, hey, we're not exactly sure how this process works. Can we get clarity on what happens when decisions are made? How can we speak to it just so that we know what that would actually look like so that we can make sure that we're supporting you in making your decision. So what we're doing is taking this idea of where don't you feel safe? Maybe it's feedback, brainstorming, decision-making. Where don't you feel safe? 
what's not clear about the process and it feels like it's just kind of someone being emotional or or doing about it in a particular way and start seeing if you can slowly build some clarity on the process so that it helps you understand how to respond and react and it also gives everyone a framework in which everyone knows how to respond and, and interact and you're doing it as a way to also make the person's job who you're trying to have them really adopt it maybe the person who isn't uh, who's doing maybe some unsafe behaviors, help them adopt a process that'll make it clear for them what to do, make it clear for us what to do, and make their life a lot easier. Trying to find how does this benefit them, that'll make it more likely for them to adopt that process. So that's just like one of the many different ways in which you can start building some safety, especially if you feel alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, one of the real challenges with finding other people who, who believe the same as you is that you start to just gossip and share how awful Mm -hmm. it is. And it's, it's dangerous to go down that path. So what's your advice for not going down that path and staying professional and appropriate, um, but recognizing the problems that are happening still? Yeah, you're absolutely right, because it's very easy to go into kind of a complaining session and create the us versus them. And that's not going to help. So I just want people to kind of keep this mentality in their head, where if we start coming together, and we try to go against someone else, their walls are going to go up. And if their walls are going to go up, that will make your life a lot harder. And so instead of making the walls go up, instead of doing an us versus them, try to see how you can adjust the environment that you're all in, which is one of the first things I try to look at. How do we adjust the environment, such as processes and systems, so that it's a much better experience for everybody involved? So focus on how to make the place better not spend your time on why this isn't working and why this is such a terrible place or whatever that may look for you. Be curious about what could we do to make this a better experience, not just for me, but for everybody else here. And having that mindset and that goal and really being aware of this is not about gossiping. This isn't really talking about how someone is bad or wrong. Because if we focus on that, it will make your life harder. Simple, plain. It'll just make it difficult. So we don't want that. We want to make your life easier. We want to make your life feel better throughout this process. So identifying the problem, but then focusing on the solution, very much like a design thinking element as well. Yeah, yeah. So can you help us understand how improv skills fit into this psychological safety? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So the one of the beautiful things about improv is that, you know, that I realize is it's a really great tool to help people come together and work with one another. So there's some simple tenets of improv that I use uh, with a lot of the people that I work at. Uh, I think a popular one that probably you know, or maybe a lot of your audience know, is this idea of yes and. Mm-hmm. In the improv world, yes and is a very simple tool where someone presents something and then you build upon it. Right. So it's a, if someone says, Hey, I really like your green sweater, you don't go, No, it's not green, it's blue. Right. Cause you're shutting them down. You're killing off the experience. And instead, you say, Yes. And my grandmother gave it to me and I love it very much. Right. So you take what was there and build upon it. Now, when we take this concept of yes and into the real world, the yes is not necessarily always about just agreeing with someone. I think the deeper level of yes is about identifying the realities of what's happening in the space and the environment rather than kind of shutting it down, putting it in the back burner or not acknowledging it. So one of the first things we want to do when creating psychological safety, especially using the tenets of improv, is let's talk about the realities of what's going on. And that could be, that in itself is pretty difficult. That's why I often have teams do a lot of anonymous surveys, um, post-it notes and things like that to disconnect ideas from people so that we can then just focus on ideas. Um, but the idea of, okay, here's the reality of this situation and let's get real about it, which is the yes. And then the and goes, now what do we do about it? 
what can we do about this reality of the situation so that we can move forward and create a better environment and a better space for all of us? Hmm. Yeah, I like that. That's very good. And I like how you how you talked about the yes and the and and, and their um, recognition of what the reality is and then making a plan to move forward. Um, I think that that's a really unique take on psychological safety and something that I really like how you're bringing those two ideas together. That's really powerful. The last question I ask is, what is one thing that a principal can do this week to be a transformative leader like you, Michael? Mm, That's a great question. I'm going to give two answers. (laughs) Um, One is for a principal to be vulnerable if it's appropriate for their environment, right? If this makes sense for the environment, for a principal to be vulnerable about them recognizing how their space is not necessarily the most safe. Uh, With one of the schools I got to work with, the principal there was phenomenal. And he recognized right away that, hey, we can do a much better job of creating a safe space. So again, this is going to clarity. This is going to the idea of that yes for the and part is as a principal, would you be willing enough, be willing enough to be vulnerable and say, hey, I realize that people don't feel comfortable sharing their classroom practices with one another. Hey, I know people don't feel comfortable about maybe making suggestions on how we can change things. And I want to do a better job of changing that. And so I'm going to work with all of you to figure out how can we create an environment where we can actually do something about that. So if you want to be a brave leader, speak to the things that are going on that aren't so great uh, to be vulnerable and saying, hey, I know I can do a better job and I need your help. And then, you know, the second part of that is then ask for their thoughts in a way that feels safe. So with psychological safety, one building it, you also want to think about how do we do this in a way that that is also safe. I think design thinking has a lot of principles and techniques that can create uh, create inherent safety. Um, And then one of the elements of safety is also this idea of inclusion, working to make sure that people are brought into the process, making sure that they feel comfortable enough to be included into what's going on. So again, a simple thing, a survey, right? An anonymous survey to help people speak to what are the things that are causing them to not feel so safe. So if that's what I would give as a little bit of uh, what I would encourage some principals to do if they want to really dive into this work and be that leader. Yeah, that's great. Really good advice there. Now, you have a, a infographic to help us understand what psychological safety is all about. Can you share how to get that? Yeah, really simple. So this infographic is just giving you some some basic knowledge about psychological safety and maybe some of the little bit on the research on it and some of the steps that you can do. So just giving you a nice uh, snapshot of psychological safety. And so you can go to my website at leadbyimpact.com forward slash info, I-N-F-O. And you'll be able to download it for free there. And so again, that's just a good starting point to kind of learn about the research and some steps you can take and things like that. Excellent. So that's uh, leadbyimpact.com slash info. Make sure you go there. That's in the show notes also at transformativeprinciple.org. Michael, thanks so much for being part of Transformative Principle today. It's been great talking to you and, and hearing your story. Well, I appreciate, again, you creating the space where I felt comfortable enough to share openly. So thank you for that. Yep. Thank you.